Hi, I'm Audra Slinky, President of the Home Staging Resource, and I just wanted to do a quick intro to this video that was originally placed in our members area. So this video is normally for people who have gone through our home staging certification training, and it's kind of an intro video for before they read through all of my many design modules. So my design modules make up the definitive guide to home staging and redesign, and so this video kind of walks them through. It's an updated video done this year on the trends I'm seeing with staging and how to stage an occupied home. So it's just a free bonus video I'm throwing out there for people who have subscribed to one of my many kind of things online and I hope you enjoy it. So sit back, get a cup of coffee and enjoy this video. Thanks so much and of course feel free to email me if you have any questions about the training or about staging in general or if you need to find a stager, if you're an agent, go to our directory. To also download our whole list of the outline of our design modules, uh, there's a link right below where you can download that big PDF to show you what's in all of our design modules. Thanks so much and see you soon. Hi, thanks so much for joining me for this quick video that kind of intros you to our many design modules where there's a lot of how-to on specific rooms and also the principles of design, but I thought a quick video would be helpful to kind of tie it all together before you get started in that area. So it's a video on how to stage an occupied home. I walk you through how to stage model homes in week three. I walk you through how to stage vacant homes in week two. Now we're talking about how we're going to stage occupied homes. These are homes that people are currently living in. You're going there for a consult, you're going to do like a quick assessment, give them maybe a staging report, tell them what they need to do, or maybe even come back for a staging day. I also walk you through how to do, you know, how to approach these homes in week one under the art of the walk and talk, so I talk about it a lot there. I also talk about it a ton in week three under our many staging day videos where you get to see us critique real live homes that are on the market right now. So there's a lot of I know how to but I'm just adding to it just for you because I think that it's just good to stay on top of things. So before you can really approach a home, you've got to know who it is we're, we're staging for, who are you designing for? Because you know the big difference between staging and redesign, two sides of the same coin, and the big question is who. Well, for staging, it's always who, because it's, it could be, you know, not all homes are the same. There's really no hard, fast rules when it comes to staging. I can't really think of any. I'm going to tell you some generic ones, but really, it really just depends on who it is that we're designing for. Is this a luxury home? Is it a cottage? Is it a low level, high level? What is it that we're staging for? And this is just a quick, uh, a great link to help you kind of know who, what the neighborhood's about, um, how high level, how uh, professional, you know, what their income levels are, all very helpful. Who lives in this neighborhood? So going and looking at other homes for sale in that neighborhood before you go to the home is also very helpful. It's good that you know your general, general area. Be a specialist in your area. Are there great schools in this area? Are we staging bedrooms for children? Uh, the price of the house usually determines the age of the children. And you know, kind of hopefully you've been watching your market. You should be on Realtor.com almost every morning while you're having your coffee looking at homes in your area up for sale and just kind of seeing what's new and uh, what the general demographic is. And is it a telecommuting area? If so, we, we kind of visit the suburbs. We kind of need that, that den, that office to stage. So just to get a generic idea of what type of people really are going to be buying this home, listing kind of the benefits of the home, you know, before we kind of get in, really what looks good, you know, is there an island, is there a loft, what are the drawbacks of the home for, or the neighborhood that you know of, how can we distract from them, these are just things that are going to go through our head when we approach the home. Who are we designing for? And kind of create a theme. I know we're limited to who it is that lives in that home, but remember our goal is when we're going into these occupied homes is to create, to really make it look like it fits the general, general buyer of the home. So we could be going into a home that originally the owners moved in when their kids were younger and they're now empty nesters and so the home looks and 
like an empty nester's home, but we know the demographic of that neighborhood's young family. So we got to completely change that. And, and it really helps to make it personal. So what's the favorite baseball team of the area? You know, is the area, do they like horses, surfing? What are the city favorites? And kind of add a little personality and interest to the home. But, you know, these are hard to do because we really have to just work with what the owner has, but of course make those suggested purchases. And also don't forget that everybody loves dogs. I always say that in the model home training too, uh, if they have a dog. It's okay, we don't want the dog around, we just can stage, you know, for it. And also cleaning out the animals in the eye. But before we really get into, I'm gonna look at real life photos of what stagers have done and kind of walk you through kind of pitfalls that I see stagers make and really good things that I think is a good idea in all types of homes. But before you can really approach that, if you're nervous about how to approach these homes, number one, I need to tell you, you're always going to be nervous because it's like meeting someone for the first time and that person, you just don't know anything about their personality, right? We're always a little nervous when we meet a person for the first time. Well, homes are the same way. They're highly complex. So meeting a home for the first time, there's always that little butterflies in the stomach excitement of what can we do for that home? What can we do for that seller? And you know, there's nothing I can necessarily say to take away that nervousness except that you got to fake it till you make it. You got to go in there with confidence. If you do not act confident and credible, nobody will believe that you are. So go in there and do it. But you also, confidence comes from having trained your eye, having an eye for what people generically like. And I think nowadays, you don't even need to look at all my photos. When we did these design modules, there was really nothing out there that you can look at design photos but magazines. Well, now you can go to house.com. I have some great idea books you can look at, but go to house.com, start looking at these photos. You're training your eye because trends change. I could have done this video years back. I didn't. This video is in 2015, but it, it won't matter at the end of the day if you're watching this video in 2018 because when you go to house, you already know what the style is, what people are liking. You, you can look at the style that's typically the styles for your area. You know what your area looks like uh, and across the country, every area has different kind of styles. So search under that home style and start just looking at favorite kitchens. The, the homes and the photos that come to the top are the ones that people like. So that gives you an idea right there and then. It's a lot easier, obviously, to look on house photos on your iPad. You can sit in front of the TV if you have an iPad and just scroll and start looking and start saving idea books for yourself. I just think that's a good idea. It, it gives your clients even an idea of the way you, what, the things that you like, and it trains your eye for the things people want to see and the things they don't want to see. Styles and trends have really changed. We've gotten away from that burgundy, maroon, brown, brown trend, <laughs> brown, brown, Tuscan trend, gone. I mean, if the home is completely Tuscan, you can't really change it. We're going to start, we're going to talk about that, but we've gone away from it. People want cool. They want fresh. They like the grays, the gray blues, the gray greens. They want fresh pops of color. And you'll see that when you go to house. Now that could be different from now, from three years from now, but that's where we're at right now. And I think the gray trend is going to keep moving and we're moving actually even more towards a white trend. I never thought I'd say that, but whites, people like fresh, they like white and it looks good. So go to house, you can train your eye. There's a lot of other great uh, sites that I recommend you go to by going to my blog post. I'll show you that right now. All right, really quickly, you can always find my blogs by going to the latest news right here on the website. And the blog is at homestagingresources.com currently. And you can search my blogs but there's one blog that talks about five tips and 48 cool resources to help home stagers learn and grow. So you can search for cool resources and you're going to get this blog. And I kind of list, well now that you're watching this, this is great. I kind of list some of my favorite, favorite things. So obviously going to, um, now, oh, my favorite, housefreshhome.com, hgtv.com, domainhome.com, lonnie.com. Those are some of my favorites. You can subscribe and get kind of new articles, and it just keeps you on track with what's kind of the latest and greatest, especially fresh home.
Love this blog. It's fantastic. Now, to stay on top of real estate news, which you should be doing too, Inman is a good one, and obviously Realtor Magazine. So that's just, you know, I'm just telling you some of my favorite places to go where you're going to get photos. But right now, let's go to House and I'll look at that real quick. All right, the thing I like about House is you don't have to look through all the photos. What you really should do is find the style for your area. Are you in the Southwest? And is the home that you're approaching Southwestern style? Because I really do think it's important that you're true to the home's style. As much as Southwestern is not my style, not my favorite, if the home architecturally is a Southwestern home, you got to go with it. You can't make a Southwestern home look like a contemporary very easily. It doesn't work. Uh, traditional. <coughs> Mid-century, which has gotten very popular, a lot of Mediterranean homes in my area, Southern California. So sometimes you just have to go with that style and, and then click on it and then go all-time popular. And of course, you know, I really just like to look at living rooms. And then scroll down to see kind of what's working. Now. This obviously is not a Mediterranean style room, clearly, because this is an ad. You always know the ads because they have the whole list of projects below. And you can, I actually talk about this in Directory, you can actually be an ad for your area. A lot of stagers do. If you have the extra money, it's a great idea to get in front and great photos. You have to have great photos. Obviously, these are large scale Mediterranean, you know, a lot of them. But not, you know, not all of them. Give you an idea, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of cool neutrals. You know, how do you update a Mediterranean? So you're just training your eye, easy ways. It's a great place to go. Finally, some good rules for home design is to find a color, pick a color scheme for the home and go with it. Usually the homeowner will already have cues, but if they have conflicting colors, you gotta get rid of one and keep one or, you know, to find kind of a scheme and work with. And that's what kind of brings style to the home and personality to the home. And it really helps to kind of connect the spaces in the home. Kids' rooms and baths are clear of kind of that. You don't have to do the rhythm. And I mean, because kids' rooms usually are blue for boys' rooms, pink for girls' rooms, and that's okay. That fits the buyer demographic, that they'd have kids' rooms, and they have their own color schemes. That's fine. You can go bolder. Your clients can have bolder color schemes in their kids' rooms and baths. Look for large, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be the photographs online that really draw the buyer in. So, and this is something you're going to tell your sellers. This is why we get rid of a lot of their smaller, even though they spent a lot of money and they have some beautiful accessories possibly, or their smaller artwork, it doesn't photograph well. So we got to take that down. We got to get rid of it because it's not going to show in the photograph. It's just going to look distracting. So what shows well in a photograph is large scale art, large scale accessories, plump, big, Pillows. The best thing they can do is remove the pillows that went with the couch. I never want to see in anybody's photos the matching couch pillows. It's got to go. Adding fresh pillows. It, it's, it's 50 bucks tops. Guys, so cheap, and you know that. At um, any any home store, even, even Amazon, have some of your favorite kind of, you know, I've got my fluffy white pillow. Sometimes that just goes. It's an easy Amazon purchase. You know, start building your own Amazon store for your clients. White towels, white duvet, white pillow, because half the time I see people do too much color. Texture photographs really well too. Silver, even though you might not be a fan of silver accessories, it photographs well. Silver or gold like tables, glass tables, clear things, stone, woven things, baskets, fur, all of that textural stuff photographs really well and that's what we're going to try and put in each room to get that great photo. And at the end of the day, I did tell you, you got to be true to the style of the home. Listen to the integrity of the home, so long as it's popular and it's on trend right now. And we got to be true to the luxury level of the home when merchandising. I don't want to see kind of a plain Jane, ugly little cottage home have big trays on the bedroom, on the on the beds, because a tray on a bed is really indicative of a luxury, beautiful master bedroom. And if that's just like a teeny you know, 12 by 12, 15 by 15 master bedroom. Just stick with a throw on the bed. You don't need to do the tray. It would be distracting and probably conflicting. So 
you know, got to be true when we talk about merchandising. You don't go overboard. It, it, I love the emotional connection points, you know that, but we can't go overboard when the home doesn't call for it. If the home calls for it, like especially model homes, then absolutely. Really keep an eye out for scale issues. I still see that as a problem uh, where the, the rugs that we lay down, are too, they don't, they're too small. They just barely go under the coffee table and the couches don't fit over them. We need large scale rugs or large scale furniture. Everything needs to be to scale. All right, let's just look at some photos of rooms that some of you have done. So this is where it's fun. I go to Stagers Connect. At Stagers Connect, I want to say there's probably 8,000 plus photos. So there's a lot you can look at, a lot you can learn. Unfortunately, when people add the photos, they don't tag them, bedroom, living room, whatever. You just have to kind of scroll through and see what you like and get some good ideas. So I'm going to use that for you. These photos are smaller. I could go, it, it'd be easier for viewing. I'm just going to hit next so that we can see some of these. But for you to see this kind of bigger on your screen, make sure the bottom right of this video, you've expanded this video to full screen. That's on you guys. You can always go full screen on these videos. Just do that and then you can hit escape to go not full screen. Um, but Karen Miller in this bedroom, I like what she did. She went with my tried and true white coverlet. You cannot go wrong with a white coverlet. Know where you can buy these, know where the client can buy them on Amazon. And then she went with a very fresh, I always use that word, very very um, updated color scheme, obviously the quatrefoil, the green. She did the throw unusually and I love it because I learned from the way you guys do it. She didn't just drape it over the foot of the bed which is very commonplace. She did it on the top and it really tied in. Just white. These are, I don't even know if these pillows have pillow covers and that's okay because white is good. It looks good with the green tied it in and she did a little pattern here and it just looks adorable and she kept it simple. She put the bed on a angle I don't necessarily recommend that. I know a lot of stagers do. It looks good in here, so she gets away with it nicely. But sometimes if the room's not big enough, it takes up too much space. But in this case, it looks great, photographs well, buyer's going to want to go there. In this example, it's Karen too. I'm just going through some of these photos. I think it's a great example of how she just easily updates kind of a beat up little coffee table. You know, this is not that special of a coffee table. She's got the scale correct. You know, she's got the carpet that goes under, you know, it reaches under the legs of the couch, so great. It anchors the space. She's updated the space with new pillows. Look, she just added two new pillows and, and this is her scheme and it looks great. Um, but I like how she did the tray. Tray is easy, remember guys, because it's very livable for our clients. They can just move the tray, put it on a counter, put it on a table up here, and then when somebody comes, they can put it, you know, clear everything off into a basket and then put the tray back on. And it, she's following my easy ways of accessorizing, which you know you go three, tall, medium, small. And then she kept it a little interesting with the bird. So she did four. That's fine. It still looks good. Tall, medium, small. And you notice how she doesn't even have anything matching. You don't have to have the candlesticks matching. She just reached around the home for that, that formula. It's a pretty simple formula. You know, tall, medium, small, and it, and it works. You don't have to go overboard on a space. And what's nice is, even on built-ins, we sometimes feel like we have to go overboard. We have a client that has just extremely busy built-ins. But look what she did here, and it works really well. Have the client clear out the built-ins entirely. Let's just start packing. It's just a good idea to do that. And she put just two mirrors on the bottom, a basket, a basket, you know, and she added symmetry. Symmetry means that we're matching here and we're matching here. Both sides are the same. And when you add symmetry to a room, and I'll talk about this in the design modules, it makes the space look very peaceful. And this space does. It's very calm. We search for matching. Our eyeballs always search for matching. So when a buyer walks in, looking at this space, they're going to get that feeling of calm because she was very symmetrical in her design. Wow, look at this. So this is the same house Karen did, and it, what a transformation. I hope you can see it. I should, oh, yeah. So here I'm zooming in on, this is the before. This is what she's working with, you know, and she told them to put all their nice stuff on the dining room table, you know, like I say, and the reality is not much of this stuff can be used because 
Why? Because it's too small. We already talked about that. We need big things. Big things are what people look for. They don't notice these little things. Could we use this cute little vase and add a plant? And this one, these two, I would take and put live plants in. You know, big, medium. We can use that. And then the matching. So, but to see what she did, I actually like. She had the client obviously paint. The table was too big for the space, so she just lifted one leaf. It works. And she laid out, she set the table, used their largest vase with flowers. And she kept it simple. The color scheme is very peaceful. And of course, really easy. Um, these chairs lent themselves to chair covers. Not all chairs do, guys. If you have spindly little wood chairs, do not put chair covers on them. It just, they don't hang right. So these were thicker, and so they lent themselves to it. And that worked. I love this photo that, who put the, posted this for you? Corey Smith. Corey, love this. Corey made out at Home Goods, but look how smart she was. She bought large, all different types of pillows, but did you notice this color scheme? It's a very popular updated. I called out last year, 2014 trends, navy is a great trend. Coral is a great trend, but it needs to be done in very teeny doses. Remember, when we're picking a color for uh, a room, I'd rather see most of the room, we talk about the 10, 30, 60, I'd rather see at least 60% of the room white, cream, beige, very neutral. Um, and then using those splashes of color, like she's, her purchases here, to really draw the eye. So you can see, and I love this mirror, it's beautiful. She got cute accessories, she got the throw that would go, and all of this, you can have the ugliest couch in the world, in, and if she, you know, puts these things on it with the throw or a chair, it's going to look good. And I like how she did the matching lamps as well. So good haul with the rug. She got everything in there. Nancy did a great job on this table. I thought as a centerpiece, because a lot of us struggle with, oh, what do we, how do we do the dining table? I'm not telling you that you need to set every dining table, because remember, we need to follow the luxury level of the room. If the dining room is this teeny little dining room, you don't need to set the table. That would look a little silly. But you can see that this room from the molding is a more special room in this home. It's a larger luxury home. So she set the table pretty simply. She actually just used little kitchen tiles and the fake fruit. It's kind of cute. And then she followed my tall, medium, small rule. And I noticed in a lot of Nancy's work, she travels this orchid. It's a beautiful orchid, travels around, and it looks great. Susan Botka does a bedroom beautifully. Uh, texture, she's sticking with the whites and the grays. Remember, this is probably just a white sheet. She probably just got rid of the coverlet altogether. Um, did the sheet over and a textured throw for the base. Looks great. Kept it very simple with the symmetrical nightstands. I love the idea of hanging the mirrors behind the nightstands, especially if there's no windows on either side, because it really does help to reflect and add light to a room. Sometimes we are working with homes that are pretty Ugh, you know, and Corey Can did a good job with this home because this looks like it's just a little apartment. There's nothing special about this room. I mean, imagine if it's vacant, it would just photograph terribly. And and this is just her photograph. A professional photograph would have made this look a little bit better. But she did what I recommend where she's renting out kids' bedrooms. You know, in a bin, You she has an air mattress it looks like, a cute little kids' comforter theme, little horse, little nightstand, little carpet, and a little wall covering. An easy just kids room you can rent out to a client. All of this costs probably less than a hundred bucks and either they can just buy it and now they've got the room staged for a kids room or they can rent it from her and it's an easy solution for these just empty spaces and or vacant staging on a budget. You can see here she has a little boys room. Same thing. You know, little Mario is cute. Playroom rules. She's And it's the same, same thing with little setup. Very simply done, easy to transport. It gives the room a little bit of interest, which would otherwise imagine this room empty. Eek, be awful. So, you know, sometimes our rooms aren't going to look fantastic because the homes aren't fantastic, but she's being true to the home and just creating a little bit of interest so that people can connect with the space.
I like what Janelle Ancelotti did in this um, space because it's just not that impressive. Obviously, you're walking right into the living room, but she kind of made it a little bit more interesting. Uh, she, you know, I love the hurricanes. So it's so easy to do. Added some, you know, greenery, easy greenery, um, and then a backgammon game. So just kept it kind of fun. Game room, very simply done. But again, this is just a very simple space. You can't overdo it. And she just created some nice interest in it. In that same home Janelle was doing, imagine this is the teeniest of kitchens and there was no place to sit. So here's a problem. Every home needs a dining area, right? Every home needs a an area for watching TV. Nowadays, the homes, they don't have to have separate living room, family rooms. Although if the home's architecture has a separate living room, family room, and I outline all of the what ifs in the design modules. But if they have it, then you better make them fit the purpose. Remember, each room has to have that specific purpose. It can't be purposeless. But in a small cottage like this, I mean, the only dining space, nook space, was right here. So what is she to do? Well, I'll show you. Well, look how cute this is. She had a very small, had them get a very small table. It fits. You can usually find this kind of thing at Cost Plus, Pier 1. Pretty inexpensive. Uh, she picked a rhythm theme. You know, she went with the navy and the green. It looks great. She set the table. You don't have to, but in this cute space, she made it look kind of cute. And then she did the little uh, cork board and just made it fun. So she created a little bit of a lifestyle interest in this very simple kind of plain Jane kitchen and it works. Remember all the staging sometimes we just have to do you know on a budget and then I like kind of I'm going to point out what Tara did in this space because we run into this dreaded sofa and I wish I could get a close-up photo of this but look what she did she she added a color scheme fresh yellow blues greens got these pillows in there and really softened up the space that's where our eye goes doesn't it imagine the space without these pretty colors she added it here too it looks good and anchored the space with the big carpet and it all kind of ties in together oh she continued kind of the rhythm on the island she set the island this is the emphasis this is where we want the eye to land and she kind of continued that green blue and set this area. So easy accessories that give the space personality. What we're running into today, we used to be that we were running into these homes that were just filled with clutter and they were a mess and they just show them that way. Well, realtors have gotten savvy now, right? It's They know that clearing out the space is what buyers really love, but now we're finding all these spaces that are devoid of any kind of personality or style. They're just cleared off. So normally we would see this island uh, if it wasn't staged, just completely cleared off. And and then what you're left with is nothing, just it's too sterile. So adding a little bit of personality really helps. This is a luxury, this is a nice home, so it fits to set the space. I like what Katie did here because this is, this is sometimes what we run into. I mean, a lot of stuff. Where do we begin? And we're always playing the ideal versus practical with our clients, right? Ideally, they get rid of this monstrosity, you know, all the electrical, the TV, all of that stuff, and the fish tank. You know, we need to somehow get rid of it. Now, this is tricky because the fish tank, they don't want the fish to die, but it doesn't belong in a living room, right? So we need that for sure to be moved. Uh, put it in the kid's bedroom. You know, that's okay. Uh, and, and But a living, but a TV, you know, ideally that gets moved, but this could be the main TV room for the house. And we, remember, do not move TV and electrical equipment. That is not our job. We don't even move heavy things. That's not our job. That would be homework. So we'd ask the client, do you watch TV? Yes, this is the room. We only watch TV, and we need that TV here. So what, did, what does Katie do? This is, I wish you could get a little bit pulled back photo. That's the hard thing about some of our photos, guys. Work on your photography skills. Not to say, Katie, this is a before photo. That's okay. But um, professional photographers do make a difference. Now let me show you her after. All right, she took the photo. She kind of blocked it out with the lamp. I would have liked her to get maybe a little bit lower. But look how she added, really cleared the space. Removed everything, kept it simple. Flowers really go a long way. Look how pretty it is. Little splashes of fresh color. Little chair in the corner. She's just borrowing from what the homeowner already has. Pushing everything in, making a cute little seating area. Kept the TV, but it's not photographed as 
as well and should probably tell the photographer photographer to do the same thing so that you kind of looks like a cute little living room and you don't really notice the TV as much or you can take the foot you know the photograph standing here uh, of course you don't want to really get the back of the living room or standing over here really it's that's why we want to determine where that photographer is going or get those good photos ourselves but I like that she kinda of cleared out this space it looks a lot better Maria does a good job here sorry guys it's kind of there's just a lot of hardscape this is again what you're gonna run into a space that was cleared off everything remember they told her to clear off everything so that's what the client did of course they always have that little box of Kleenex out we don't want that and what does she do? She adds a little personality. She layers uh, frames, which I think look great, on a mantle. And she adds, oh, pillow magic. Look how great that looks. A little personality, blues, yellows, and then something on the table. Just a few accessories she borrowed from the rest of the house or had them purchase those few things. Even an ugly couch, I said, can go a long way with just some personality. And the pillows do not have to match, but the, that the color should. I actually like it when you create interest. Different patterns, similar color scheme. The colors have to have the same tone to them. If they're, all, if they're muted colors, great, all muted. If they're bright colors, great, they should all be bright. You don't want to have mixed tones. Good job, Maria. Remember how I said, each room has to have a purpose. Well, the dining table's purpose is not to be a ping pong table. <laughs> so what does she do? She just, you know, borrows a small runner that they had, a little something. Obviously, the owners didn't have a lot, and put some chairs around it. Another good tip is you don't have to have chairs at the end of the table. Sometimes it, it creates more of a sense of space when you don't. Just play with it, guys. It, it, sometimes it looks great, but I, I think it creates a little interest by not having chairs at the end, especially if you're photographing from one end of the table. Clear that one end chair out and just photograph all the way down the table. Love what Barbie did here. I tell you the emotional connection points. Well, you can see this is a really nice kitchen. She got a little creative. She was having fun with the photos, but I like that she created a little coffee station because people, you know, love their coffee. And all she did is a little bouquet, a little sugar. Who doesn't have this stuff on hand in a little tray next to the Keurig? I mean, it just looks cute. Good job, Barbie. Nancy Lynn, nice job with this bedroom. I mean, ideally, we don't want a bed blocking the window. But in this teeny room, she's just working with what they have, and they had to have it. Luckily, it's, you know, wrought iron, so the light still comes through. And she just did made the bed simply, and it looks great. She put the comforter at the foot of the bed, because usually people have the matching comforter and pillows, but we don't want that much pattern. So just keeping that white underneath gives the eye a place to rest, and it just keeps it simple. Take down the pictures on the wall if they don't look good or they're not enhancing the space. I'd rather, I always call it up-downing to update. Sometimes that's what we need to do. If the pictures are old or out of scale, they don't look right. A blank wall is better than an ugly one. I like what Karen Hunter does here. And you know, again, I'm such a fan of the orchids, but it does look good. Uh, on the tray, very simple. Coffee, this is an ottoman or a coffee table, I can't tell. Uh, I like that she, I always told you, be personal to the area. Well, she has the magazine that, that fits with the area, so people like that. This is this is the area, this is where you're living. A uh, little pillow on the chair, you know, a lot of symmetry going on with the lamps behind. And then uh, because this is a chunky mantle, chunky items on top work. And it kind of draws the eye, you know, kind of up. And, and we're, you know, connecting to this space because she's accessorized it nicely. Okay, in that same house, Karen Hunter, I like this because you can see she's doing her best to use what the client has. But what do you do in this case? The client uses the family room as a studio. So that's <laughs> just not going to work. The average person doesn't have a studio in their house. And remember, we talked about purpose. She knew who the demographic was, so 
it's time to start packing and that's what she obviously had the client do and then she worked with the color scheme right they weren't going to re-carpet this space a lot of times they won't again we play ideal versus practical if they were then great and she just makes it kind of a retro area I don't know if this couch was something the client had it probably was where she borrowed it from another room uh, but in another a space even if she if you had to actually I'll show you in the next room it's an it's an office but it's a mess and she realized it needed to be staged as a bedroom so what did she recommend this is why it's really good even if you don't plan on doing purely vacant homes get to know the furniture rental company near you because sometimes you will rent furniture in occupied homes it will make sense especially if that home is worth you know four hundred thousand dollars plus which is, is a nicer home I'm sure it is so what did she do in one space she rented a bedroom set or borrowed it I don't know it looks like this office could have been moved she moved the bed over here so sometimes you will make suggestions I don't know if she did but it's it's okay to do that especially if it's a really nice home I know if you're staging in Manhattan New York and all those homes are in the million million and they have dated old furnishings it makes sense for them to just clear all of that out and start living in rental furnishings and have it look nice and staged because again we're we're looking at a staged home has the potential of getting 10 percent more in value and that 10 percent can be for a two hundred thousand dollar home twenty thousand for a million dollar a thousand a million dollar home a hundred thousand so you've got something to work with with a client's budget where it really makes sense for them to stage or not stage I also like what she did with this kitchen same house it looks like you know they they're still packing she's packing everything away and she said it cute it looks cute she just went with a cute color scheme little bowls uh, uh, just a little pitcher with the flowers a little tea kettle and I don't know if you can see here but she's got her little business cards right there where you'd walk in on the island very cleverly done Karen remember we you always want people to know who it is that was there staging the home Yep, I can see. I'm looking at Karen's home pictures now, and here, you, same home. This is a luxury home, nice home, but there is no way we can stage this furniture to look great. It looks like the homeowner tried to. There is not much you can do. It makes sense for this client to to move out this stuff. Remember, this is dated. This is kind of old school. Just doesn't look right. And, um, and go fresh and go new. But Karen did use some other things. Remember these? I showed you these from the previous um, photo. Well, let's look at this next photo. So she used their lamps. She used their coffee table. She had these two couches rented. Looks great. And the two chairs. So you can work with a client. Um, some of this stuff is rental. Some of it isn't. But now this room looks like the luxury living room it should be. And it really was helpful to the client's budget. So remember, occupied doesn't mean we'd never rent uh, stuff because in some cases, when it financially makes sense to the homeowner, it, it'll have a lot of bang for their buck and this home will go fast and it'll go for a lot. Compare it with this old photo again. From this to this. I like also that she got rid of that large carpet. This carpet was just overwhelming the space. This with the colorful couches and chairs, it was just overwhelming. So she kept a lot of their accessories. She kept this little table, kept this, and then just rented a small carpet, put the legs of the couch and all the furnitures on it, and away we go. Looks nice. I love looking at Pavlina's work she is working you can tell this is no architecture you'd really see in uh, the states uh, she's in Prague and she does great work and you can see some of the architecture she, she has to work with but she created a really cute emotional connection point on the teeny little balcony it's a beautiful city apartment and you can see what she's working with here it's a it's a hard space to work with and I'll show you here's just a random space that the clients were using as a bedroom you can see you can't even fit a bedroom here so it's just kind of a storage space and that's kind of what she made it where she just put a little little seating or a little reading room and and gave it a little interest but there's not much you can do there so she did good for for what you can do 
Same thing, awkward living room. You can see this is that same space that you can kind of peek into. She made a little chair sitting room. But living room, she put it all together. I mean, that's what little the little vignette looks good and and it works by adding just a a little space on an angle gives it interest. I like what she did. Look at this little little bathroom. Had I don't know some kind of little shelving unit and sticky fishies and she just you know had them get rid of it keep it simple and yes even use the orchids work in Prague too they work everywhere white towels I tell you stack of white towels everybody likes like white denotes clean in a bathroom bedroom so fluffy white towels little bar of soap looks adorable good job Pavlina Oh, here's the full size. Of here was the living room before, and here's how she changed it up. Yeah, can you imagine that couch? That wouldn't work. People would walk in and say, this space does not work. I'm not going to sit on a couch that faces a, a pole, and in this space it does work, even though it's just a random space. This is tricky. This is someone doing the best they can with a really awkward space. This was the small little kitchen eating area for that little apartment in the middle of the city, and this was the before, so you can see what she did. And the after. And yes, the simple bowl of fruit, the little orchid plant, and she set the table. Looks adorable. Little uh, plants in the window so that the client's eye can go out to the window where that little balcony sat, where I showed you how she kind of emotionally connected that balcony as well. So a very small space, a lot of money because it's right in the middle of the city, and she made the most of it. Let's look at that little balcony again. Look at the difference. This, is, this would have been on the MLS before. And now look at the after. What do, what do you think when you see this? A buyer's going to think, I can sit out here and drink champagne and look at views of the city. It's beautiful. I like what Tansy Miller did in this living room. She obviously was on a very low budget. Here is the before, dealing with the infamous, you know, cream leather couches. And this is what she did afterward. You know, again, a little blue footstool kind of ties it in kind of going with the blue and the green and it and it just works it just gives us room more personality still going with that you know not so good carpet but it works I also love Joan McLaughlin's work here remember when we talked about make each room have a purpose it looks like this was a home old craftsman lots of architectural woodworks beautiful home but really dark colors sat on the market for two years but you can see even in just this room empty devoid of personality and you can see from this photo right here she gives it purpose what does she do she puts it just a couple little chairs those makes it a little seating room what a difference same home Joe McLaughlin look at this dining room I mean we can tell there's so many beautiful architectural elements to this room we wish we could have homes like this to stage so we're jealous Joe that you got to do this uh, but there's just so much distracting us from the beauty of this room, uh, including what would be considered great artwork, but it's a little disturbing, some of it, and it's over the moldings, which is not a good thing. And even just having the table at an odd angle doesn't work. So you can see what she did here. She put the, the extra leaf in the table, because remember I said, I could easily tell you in all cases take the leaf out of the table because it makes the room look bigger. No, it doesn't. When you take the leaf out of a table of a large room, it makes that teeny little table out of scale to the large room. This is a huge room. It makes sense for her to put the leaf in the table. She doesn't need to have all the chairs because all the chairs can be distracting, so she removes the two side chairs. She includes a runner and just sets the end. I like how she opened the chair. She's working with the photographer here by doing that. She obviously got rid of all of that distracting art but included one little art piece up there because again it adds attention to the fact that this is a cool ledge that the client can do that with so that's kind of cool uh, and, and and kept the cute table in the corner set it with a little champagne uh, so it's ready to entertain and now this room looks a hundred percent better there's the old there's the new. I love what uh, Deborah Sierkowski did in this home because she had said that the homeowner she told them you know clear everything out and they did and she had planned to stage this as a cute little pink girls bedroom 
change of plans. And she knew she was going to have to use vacant, you know, she was going to have to stage it like a vacant and, and rent furniture because there really wasn't a lot that this client owned that was worthy of, you know, the home itself, which had tremendous price potential. Remember when it has tremendous price potential, with, price potential when that 10% can be up to $100,000, really makes sense to spend that few thousand dollars and put in, you know, rent that furniture. So she changed plans because they had already decided to paint this room mustard. She didn't pick this color, but look how well she ties it in with the accessories. Just a little throw, again, sticking to my white. Remember, the beauty of getting white, guys, and having it is that you'll, especially even for vacant homes, is that it works with everything. It'll always work. That way you're just using a couple accent pillows and throw. The art, black and white accessory works, black and white, I'm sorry, art works really well in every room too because it's just universal. It'll go, whether this room was navy or pink or green or purple, all of this would have worked except, you know, the only color that she added was in the pillows and the throw, so that works. I like how Mary Landucci, this was a game room and Unfortunately, we don't have the before, but we can imagine the before because we can see what she was working with, an old, tired couch. Then look how she freshened up that couch. Nothing on the wall, but made fresh with a, a new accessory, cute little mirror. And then she set up a little game table over here and then had just the the carpets to anchor each space so it looks like two separate spaces in what would otherwise be a very long, narrow room. So she broke up a long, narrow room, which is a good thing to do. Especially if it's hardwood, she's able to put the carpets to kind of anchor the two purposes of the space. Do not put carpet over carpet. I just don't think that's ever a good idea. It reads red flags to a buyer when they see carpet over carpet, they think you're trying to hide stains. And if the carpet's just terribly stained, that seller just needs to replace it. They really do. It's in, literally impossible to stage when the when the carpets are ridiculously stained up. If we have to stage, and we definitely can put furniture over it, but carpet over carpet definitely reads that you're hiding it, and it never usually looks good. So she did a great job in here. Finally, here's the staging that Janelle Ancelotti did. And guys, I know it's tough, because a lot of times we're walking into homes and the rooms look like this. And we'll never get them to look like the model home room we'd like. But a little staging or some staging is better than none. But also remember, it's really important to be honest with your clients. I know we don't want to offend them, but at the end of the day, you also don't want to put your name on a job that just really wasn't all the way done. So we are doing our clients a disservice when we don't tell them everything they need to do. And Ultimately, they are paying us to be the experts in the space. So in most cases, in a lot of rooms we go to, you know, one of the questions, I, I know in week three, I talk about the HSR Guide to Success. So you'll want to get there where we talk about the feel home, eight steps in each room. And it's, you know, the first impressions. That's what we're gathering, eliminating clutter. We're doing a lot to eliminate clutter. That's a lot of what we're doing. Another question you're going to want to ask your clients in the consultation, it's just an idea, is um, besides asking what their first impressions is, is ask them what in this space have you updated in the last few years or purchased? And if they don't have any answers, then that's a good reminder for them to know that this is a space that they're going to make a lot more money by doing a little a bit of updating or what I call, you know, updowning. So in this case, Janelle went from this to this, getting rid of the drapes, getting rid of the paint, keeping everything that they have and getting rid of everything else. And it's not a model home space, but does this space look a lot better? Absolutely. So hopefully this video helped, you know, when in doubt, go into Stagers Connect, look at some of those photos, go to house, look at those photos, because those are really ideal designer rooms. They look gorgeous too. And train your eye all the time, train your eye. Thank you so much. Continue reading through the rest of my design modules. You'll get a lot out of each one of them where I tack each space and tell you what to do. Hope this helps. We'll talk soon.